I'll edit that out. That, no, because that sounded weird. When I <laughs> when I when I said that out loud, I was like, "Bro, what are you doing right now?" Hey guys, welcome, 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 welcome. I'm catching up with the community, catching up with everything going on while I drink this whiskey, and I also have a guest with me. You guys might know him as the mighty, the legendary Beanie Senpai. Oh yeah, I'm in. <clears throat> oh yeah. Sixty percent of my right viewers there. just left. Sixty yeah. percent, <laughs> or sixty percent just joined, just jo or sixty percent just joined. Yeah, if you guys aren't following Beanie, go ahead and follow Beanie because he's a dope person, and I'll link him down below. Go ahead and check him out. We've had some updates. The fusion is out. We're gonna talk about everything that's been going on. Talking promo codes. We're just gonna kind of go with the flow. There's no particular order with which we're going. The most recent promo codes that are still active. If you are a newer player, raid rewards, game leap, floral boost 2GT, and raid MMORPG. If you haven't seen your chronicle, go ahead and check this out here. I'm not gonna bother sharing it with you. It's not that cool, but you can share this link. If you don't want to actually share, you don't have to, but all you got to do is just click one of these and you can actually receive the primal shards and, and everything. There is also the free stuff that Polarium has been giving us. They're breaking it down. The fifth anniversary pack. Pretty generous. Five days. Mm -hmm. Pretty generous in my opinion. Now, I've already gone over his kit and everything. I do think he is an insane champion. It feels like, and again, it feels to me personally like he's a champion you don't want to miss out on if you have the resources to go ahead and go for him i would probably go out of my way and go for captain jack sparrow here my wife actually saw this character and she was like oh looks like captain jack sparrow smash and then she was the <laughs> next night the next night bro the next night she was like hey babe i'm gonna re-download raid shadow legends and try to go for the fusion no <laughs> bro she said that shit i was like what do you mean you're gonna read down she's like i, I just want to re-download raid and she was like i just want to like you know be in tune with you honey like i, yeah. I want to i was like oh okay all this time all these awesome fusions yeah. and and mm -hmm. free champions mm -hmm. that were being handed out and you don't want to you know come back to raid but as soon as you see someone who looks like captain jack sparrow you're like, oh, I'm gonna come back to raid. So she re-downloaded it last night, and wow, um, yeah, <laughs> so that's insane. Uh, can Whoa. any of you guys, any of my viewers right now, can any of you guys verify this right here with me? So it says for his A3 that he can sheep somebody and that it cannot be blocked. I do not remember because when I first went over this, I don't know if they changed it. When I first went over this, I could have sworn that it was a move that could have been blocked. Now, I know it can be resisted, because it doesn't say it cannot be resisted, but this is the same mechanic as Sun Wukong. It can't be blocked, which means that if I were to put Stone Skin or an immunity set on somebody, then he would still be able to sheep through it. But initially, I thought that wasn't the case, that if somebody popped in with immunity, then they couldn't get sheep. But uh, someone, someone verify that with me yeah. anyway. But I, I will say, if you look at Wukong's, the wording is the exact same. Same. On Wukong's, it literally says the exact same thing on his, I believe, A2, that this buff cannot be blocked. Mm -hmm. right so it, with that being said, I would just assume that it is along the same lines of it just can't be blocked, just like Wukong's sheep can't be blocked. It would be weird for it to react differently because then i feel like they would have to change wukong sheep which i don't obviously think they're going to do so and i could be wrong but it, it, it's worded the exact same so why would it be different i don't know someone in the comments some giga chat out there is going to correct me and i'm all about it i don't always recommend spending but if you do have the budget for it if you find it fun and entertaining the forge pass i think is personally a good buy i hopped right on it i know i said i wasn't going to spend till june i know i know shame Shame. Everyone, shame in the chat. <laughs> Everyone. Common shame. This. You get this, guys. All of these rewards, plus what I consider to be pretty much S tier gear and mythical at that. Yeah. Like nine pieces of this. Real quick for the Forge, mm -hmm. they actually changed it uh, from the last one. I feel like it's been upgraded, if, if you will. It has now, because before it didn't have mythical gear once you bought it. And once you grind it through it, but now you're getting all types of 
like six star mythical gear would be mm-hmm. crazy. Like if you, even if, and let's just wish luck upon everyone who gets, yep. you know, that we all get quad rolls. But even if you were to just get speed boots, six star mythical speed boots, that's huge. That's just like insane or crit damage gloves. And maybe yeah. the substance aren't the, aren't the best, but unless you're super late game, like those still will be really good, uh, increase in gear compared to what you normally get like if i got this on my main account which obviously is nowhere near as far as yours is but that would be a difference for me that'd be a huge yeah. difference maker the other thing i want to talk about is marius the gallant who seems like an insane champion his aoe in feeble was supposed to be something completely coked out unfortunately they're going to change his A1 to not affect bosses. So initially we thought that Enfeeble, which is a debuff that you can place on an enemy so that they weak hit, uh, is going to be changed and it's not going to be affecting any bosses, but it'll still affect everywhere else. Marius seems like an insane champion. If you haven't completed the, uh, the Arbiter missions, you won't be able to see this, but now you can tab over and you can see the Marius missions. Let's slow this down, let's see how much Tars does to the Iron Twins on level one. Almost Woo! one mil. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's a lot of damage. That was fun to see. And so now that <laughs> uh, that's pretty much done. I feel like there's one thing I wish Polarium would somewhat add to the missions. And I do understand that maybe it would be much. But it, it kind of sucks that if you do beat Arbiter, right? Mm-hmm. Say you just finished the Arbiter missions. And you already are on Iron Twin Stage 5. Well, now you have to... And because it's... It's quoted as, you know, clear stage one, not stage one or higher. It just mm-hmm. says clear stage one. True. It just sucks that, like, some of this stuff you could have already finished, and you have to do it again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not like, I, right. I wish there was a way for it to track, like, all time. Like, okay, well, he, clearly he's on, you know, stage five. He he can just be done with this. Like, <laughs> with that, do you think that's, like... They don't do that because too many people would collect it too fast. And if that's the case, like, why would that matter? I'm not sure why they do it. I know for some missions, like the fusion, the the fuse, um, like one of the first fusions you have to do is retroactive, meaning that if, if you've done it, then they are they already counted for you. Kind of like mm-hmm. this, like it's not gonna have me do C C five of Curse City again because it's already done. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I don't know. I couldn't I couldn't tell you. I don't know why they. I don't know what Polarium does or why they do the things that they do. True, uh, true. I just I'm just here. But yeah. Yeah. I'm right there, I'm right there with you. More gathering of chests, more crests in the Great Hall. You gotta spend some. Purchase souls from the soul merchant. So it seems to me like you're gonna have to save up a lot of your coins and your souls from the Altar of Souls. These seem like hard missions. So there's 180 new ones. Hydra, Awaken a Champion. And we can't access... We cannot access part two or part three yet, but but yeah, these these look pretty easy to do, and yeah, I'm I'm excited to get Marius because he seems like a cracked out champion. There are going to be, be getting up. not anytime soon, probably. No. It's going to take you some time, even if you do pay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There are going to be new area bonuses. So in the Great Hall, right here, you can see that there's some area bonuses depending on where you you are. Um, for, for Live Arena, you collect coins and you can upgrade, and it looks like it is actually already in effect. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. So now we can actually have better uh, stats for certain areas. Specifically for me, I don't think that I'm going to bother increasing my stats for Sand Devil and Phantom Shogun just because I already have my my cheese teams already set. But I'm probably going to go and take this Cursed City. Because Cursed City, even for me, once you get to the Northern region... It's just extremely hard. And I mm. saw some missions that if you don't have a roster, you're not you're probably not going to complete that stage. So that kind of sucks. The classic arena counter, you have to do you have to do 20 battles, otherwise you drop. And what else is here? Looks like they buffed or nerfed some champions, one of the two. So there's that. Now the next thing will be the Armand's the Magnificent Fusion. We're gonna go over the we're gonna see what overlaps. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see. So it says here that there's going to be 200 
available from 200 fragments so the way this works is you do the events and tournaments fuse it into these epic champions and then you're able to ascend and rank up those champions these kafru the death keeper champions epics into our mons and so you're going to have a total of 450 and if you do the hero's path it's the hero's path with champion fragments oh is that the new event that's about to pop out i guess they're about to do a new yeah event here. you can't really uh you can't See. look at it yet okay so then they're gonna do that and you can get an extra 50. oh it says it right here starting on the 18th they're gonna do the hero's path so if you get 50 here i don't know what that's gonna entail oh right here summon champions and summon souls from soul stones so that's what you're gonna have to do to get 50 to to do that uh, look i'm so burnt out on a hero path anything right. based on the last couple that we've done oh my goodness i can't even imagine the seventy thousand points or whatever it is that you're going to mm -hmm. need to get those extra 50. i wonder what the main thing is going to be are they going to give them a five star soul or i'm sure there'll be something to entice people to to chase. participate yeah you got a five star soul in our mons straight polymorph up the butt yeah that'd be crazy yeah. That'd be that'd be too much. But yeah, so we have a dragon champ training classic arena, pretty easy ice golem, summon rush artifact, dungeon divers. Actually, so what I should have been doing. What, what's the date today? Today's the seventh, eighth. I mean, I guess you could, if you really wanted to, you could triple dip. So what you could mm. do is do dragon champ training and dungeon divers all in the same vein. You do dragon. If you have a solo champion, you could do solo champion um, runs, and then you could put food in there, get your champion training up, and then at the same time do dungeon divers. It's like the most efficient way to do it. Yeah. But then if you're not the type of guy who likes to uh, cap out and you want to use every single energy that you can as it's coming, then probably don't wait. But I think what I, I need to do is is uh, be very passive about where I'm spending my energy until dungeon diver starts. Triple dip there. Classic green is pretty easy. Ice Golem, you could also double dip here as well in case you don't finish Dungeon Divers. Now, Summon Rush. Mm. I don't know how difficult Summon Rush is going to be. As you know, I kind of have challenged myself to not summon any shards. So I'm trying Holy not to sacred. pull... Yeah, I'm trying not to pull anything for a year just to see how many free-to-play shards I get. So I'm trying to not summon... I the last fusion I did I just summoned a bunch of green shards and I was able to get it done and what the other thing that I did was oh that was for champion chase we, we have a champion chase right there's always a champion chase here so there's one champion chase here what I usually do for champ chase is all of the epics that I get I wait to pull it during champion chase so if you happen to yeah if you happen to get the events and you get the fragments for these champions wait until champion training to fuse them and that's going to be points that'll be like what 200 350 champ chase points because they're voids mm. and the other thing that i do is i'm probably going to have to summon Zenogre and granjar from the summoning portal and i save them there uh what about you beanie are you going to uh summon are you do we have any summon videos coming out so for me, like looking at my account right now, mm -hmm. I have about five voids, a primal, a sacred, you know, 14 ancients. And I have like 2000 mysteries. Now, it really depends on how, like, I really want this champion, right? I think yeah. he'd be really good for my arena team. Like, it's something I do want to shoot for. And I really wish, you know, the summon starts in about five hours. But I will say, if I don't have enough for the shards that I have right now, I will do a shard summoning video. Okay. Don't say I don't love you guys. And uh burrito slayer will be there too. You, you heard, heard it here first. first. <laughs> <laughs> great minds, great minds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how many shards you're going to be needing. G generally speaking, general generally speaking, whenever they do summon rush events. I have to pull the equivalent of seven or eight yellow shards, sacreds, mm -hmm. and that's usually the the enough to get the the fragments that I need. But I don't I don't know um, 
like your blues aren't going to be worth much because I think it's only like, no. like 10 per blue shard. I mean, I think it's worth a little more than 10, but I mean, it really, I think what it's really going to come down to is there's a lot of things I want, mm -hmm. right? And with the, let me pull up, go to the Discord and find, scroll, 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 oh, scroll, yeah. scroll. Discord. Okay. I mean, like if we're looking at it, like we have a Duchess, a Pythion, Mighty Uko, we got Arbiter. I mean, we have so many good champions that are going to be in this. And I do know that it's a times 25 progressive, but we also have a summon one, get one free two times. Like it happens twice. So if, if I were to do a shard pull video, which I'm not going to do as many because I'm trying to cut back and I don't want that to be what my channel is about. But if I were to do one, like this weekend would be the weekend that I would do it because a Duchess would be huge for my account. That would be insane for yeah. my account. A Pythion again would be really, really good. Those are both at, like, these aren't just normal legendaries that are like, whatever. These are like S tier yep. used everywhere, yep. you know, game changing champion. So, for me, I would love a Duchess or a Pythion. Even Mighty Uko oh, is yeah. really, really good with his revives and everything. Like, So it's really hard because any of those champions would be good for my account. And mm -hmm. even then, getting two legendaries, just one being good enough to take me to a new level in any area of the game would be massive. So I probably will do a start summoning video, I think, this weekend just to try and get that free legendary. Do you have any tips for any newer since and the reason I asked this is because I'm I'm pretty much disconnected from mm -hmm. the newer player base, even though I do run my free to play um, beginner account. Like, I, I, I don't think I can relate too well because it's been like five years plus since I've been a new player. But do you have any right. tips for um, anybody asking questions like, oh, how do I get shards or how do you save shards or what can I do to best prepare for this fusion event or it's already in full swing technically but like oh, right. what what can they do what what do, you, what do you think like two big advice advices you can give i think my two biggest advice i think you you kind of tackled one right mm -hmm. the the biggest problem is we're not as a free to play player as a newer player you're just not going to have the energy needed to just grind out as much as you can as often as you can so you have to be very strategic and I think you hit hit it right on the head. Now, on my main account, I've already cleared Dragon because I needed to do it anyway. And triple dipping is the better play. But I have thousands of energy mm -hmm. that I can do whatever I want with. On my free to play, I don't. So a few things I think that you should do is when you get your energy pots that go into your your gift box, right? Yeah, your little box. treasure chest. Yeah. Save them. Like, they're good for 99 days. Do not use them because I have, like, eight in mine. And now I can use all eight of those to grind out this event. So I think saving resources for the best chance is great. Now, I will say, with the summon event coming up, these aren't boosted odds. So even if you are summoning, like, the, you could just not get anything. And you may not have all the shards you need. So what I think you should do is if you can if you have the energy to get the champion you should go for it because you're not mm -hmm. just going to get the champion you're going to get a lot of different rewards epic books all type of things right like if on my free to play account um not to just talk in circles but <laughs> i only need 425 for the champion but i'm also getting silver gems chickens books and once I hit 425, I can just stop. Like, you don't need to win the tournaments. You just need to get the shards. And even if you only got one or two of those champions, yeah. you have a new Void Epic that you can use. So I think the best thing for free-to-play players is double dip, triple dip when able based on the events. And make sure you're saving your resources to put yourself in the best positions. You should only be using your shards realistically for times two events. Yeah. Or and guaranteed. That's it. Like, or guaranteed if you have enough. But the free-to-play game is the number one you, thing you should be doing. Out, like, save all your stuff and just farm food. Just farm food nonstop because you're always going to need to six-star a new champion. You're always going to need to be pushing. And once you saved enough, when this event comes up, you can already have the shards needed to pull. Mm. You can already have the champions needed to level up. 
pretty much for a free to play, you have to put yourself in a position to win. And on pay to win accounts, obviously, you're just pay to win. Yeah. Um, like, obviously, I, I don't really have to worry about resources. And even if I do run low on energy, I mean, the shop is right there. Or I could mm -hmm. just use gems. But this event honestly doesn't seem that difficult um, yeah. to to do. Uh, there's only because I've I've done some fusion events where there's like three summoning events that you have to do. Yeah, it's insane. But this seems pretty straightforward, pretty easy, especially with everything that they've been giving us. It, it's it's nice, and they do have the hero's path that you have. A, well, I guess that's technically a third summoning event if you wanted to do that. But if you do mm -hmm. this, then you could so, you could skip the two summon events. I guess I don't know. But this Depends one, on how many yeah, there. exactly. So th for me, this this one's gonna be in the bag, but this summon rush might be questionable. But yeah, you're right. Um, one thing that if you're not a pay to win player, that you should do that Beanie hit on is you could probably only save resources for when you actually need them. So like uh, for a while, when I was doing free to play for a while. I didn't spend any energy and I only saved all of my resources, shards, uh, silver, energy, and I would cap out up into like the 10, 15 thousands just to use them for fusion events that I deemed to be worthy, like nut level, brogni level fusions. Mm. So that that is one thing that you could do. But then the other side of that is you're missing out on thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of energy, actually, if you're letting yourself. Um, and I learned this from Boozer. Well, I mean, I learned it a long time ago, but it was reestablished and uh, reaffirmed when Boozer came out with his video on how he manages his energy and how how far he gets as a, as a free to play player being so deep balls deep in the end game. But yeah. Mm. The other thing is the artifact enhancement event. So silver, if you're doing art, because there's three events, one, two, three, the best places to, to and I have videos on this if you guys want to see the best places to get, uh, blah, 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 blah. I almost said energy. The best places to get silver is going to be, are going to be in the spider. So you want to do spider. And if you need like quick cash, what you could do is go to the forge and all these resilience pieces and perception that you end up getting tons of. See, I'm almost capped out here at a thousand. You can just quick craft everything and then sell everything quickly. And um, that's that's another way to do your artifact enhancement events. So there's that. And then fire and I, you can double dip with the dungeon divers as well and champ training on top of that. If you can, if you have someone who can solo fire Knight. It's also worth noting you could drop down stages. You don't have to, um, like right now I'm using Theodore in stage six, either stage six or eight of hard mode, hard mode uh, dragon. But I dropped in order to be able to do to do that. So what you could do is like drop down to stage ten or stage thirteen of dragon or fire knight, and get the points that you need and just stop whenever you need to. Like Beanie was saying. Spider arena takedown. Yeah, so this is this is pretty easy. This this looks pretty easy. Of course, I don't really know what the requirements are yet in terms of points, but like let's take a look at Dragon for an example. We have two days to get to 2250. I don't think that's hard to do. I think that's mm -hmm. fairly fairly easy, fairly reasonable. Champ training 7850. I think that's pretty reasonable too, assuming that you're you're able to Well, let me it's not the easiest thing I, I will mention, but you do have three, four days to do it. So, and the best way to do it, like I just said, is go into dragon and farm food at the same time that you're doing dragon. So that's like the most efficient way to do that. So the fusion, if you can do it, go ahead and, and go for it. The other thing, and we actually talked about this on Beanie's account, and I saw this epic champion for the first time, Carfu the Death Keeper. He seems, one, he looks visually tantalizing, like a mummy. He's got the, the dagger in his back, the whole mummy getup, the shield for his uh, the coffin. He took the top of the coffin. He's got a knife coming in, in through his head. Um, yeah, he just looks insane. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome artwork. Defense-based champion, chance of transferring a random debuff onto another enemy. AoE, removing one random debuff. Damage increases by 5% for each debuff removed. Heals by 10% of this max HP if it was removed. Three turn cooldown. So he's going to be tanky. You're going to want to build him with high HP and defense. 
He's got unkillable and taunt. Four turn cooldown, I think that means that there's potential for him to be in some unkillable comps. Because this is very similar to Emic, who has the unkillable, but two turns and it's on the whole team. But he also has taunt, so he's going to be hit on, no matter what, he'll be hit. So, like, in, in the way I, like, for, for, for Phantom Shogun, I can already see, like, Gnarlhorn and, and Kafru working together to make some kind of comp work. Now, he's got his passive, which is basically a built-in ally protect. So, this champion is not complete trash. I think he's worth it. If you decide that you don't want to go for the fusion or it's out of it's out of reach, then you could settle for doing this, um, just taking one of the voids. Heck, even take two, because you never know. One, if you have two of these, that's faction guardians, and then you could probably unlock some type of unkillable comp as well. So I think for the fusion on a free-to-play player, it seems kind of daunting when you look at it. Yeah. You know, you have all these events coming up. You got multiple artifact enhancers. You have multiple training champs, multiple summoning things. I'd say for a free-to-play, the hardest thing is the summons. If you can do the summons, you can do everything else. Yeah. Oh, you 100%. get about, I mean, you get about 200 energy, you know, every so often, every few hours. You could literally just grind the 200 energy and whatever event that's up get off your phone come back in a couple hours grind the energy again i mean and you're going to be getting silver while you're doing this right while you're grinding dungeons while you're grinding campaign for the champions and things along that nature it's it's very doable and you don't want to look at it to the point where it's like oh this is so daunting like i'm never going to get this champion oh what about these fragments at the end of the day at worst say you get three of them you don't get the fourth you're you're out of fragments one you can actually spin those fragments into other things you know with high mother mod yeah right so worse comes to worse even if you don't get them at least you're going to get something for it so i think trying your best matters at least trying to get it yeah at worst you get a couple good champions you get two of them three of them or you get you know hype maybe you get some good stuff and you can you know get some chicken some barrels or or, or some feast or something mm -hmm. so it's not like I mean, you should go for him no matter what, but don't be daunted or upset if you don't, you know? You just know how to better prepare. I think trying will put you in a better position to succeed next time because then you could be like, dang, this is what I really struggled on. Now I know I at least want these things in case the next fusion's coming up. Yeah. Or, like, oh, the next fusion's coming up in a couple weeks. I know this is what I need to prepare my account for. I think that's what matters for free-to-play. Yeah, and I, I think you, you, you hit it right on the head with a nail uh and i think deeper than than even that kind of would be just coming in with the right mindset i think a lot of people see the fusions and they're just like hey you know whatever or it's too hard or player in this player in that but if you come in with the right mindset i think you're golden so yeah, yeah. also it is uh fever drop events so 2x for region 2x for speed definitely worth going for uh it's worth it's worth having extra speed and region on your account yeah, but yeah. And this is an example of using a solo champion to triple dip or double dip in this specific event where you can farm your dragon points and you can also get your champ training done. Any last closing thoughts, Beanie? No, I think you've said everything that could be said. Okay. Then, um, yeah. Uh, thank you, Beanie, for coming on and give me, giving me um, 40 minutes of your time. I appreciate it. Of course, it. I'm glad, glad to be here, glad to help. And if you want to see a video on how I build a solo champion, we can start with Teodor if you're lucky enough to have him. And you can check out that video right here. Cue the music. Do, 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 do.